Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today for Wednesdays with Ray. Today, we are going to be talking about how to mend and darn holes and weak spots in your knitting, both in ways that will keep it invisible and visible if you would like that repair to be sort of a statement on your piece. But either way, it will extend the life of your knitted items. So the first method that we are going to go over today is the duplicate stitch or Swiss darning method. Um, this is my preferred method for pieces that haven't actually developed a hole yet, but have some very weak spots. Um, it's common to find these on the heels of socks, elbows of sweaters, anywhere that sees a lot of wear. So I have used fingering weight yarn in the middle of this swatch to simulate where yarn might be running thin. So if left unattended, this would eventually turn into a very large hole. So this is the perfect time to reinforce that area of fabric. So you're going to start with a length of yarn. And you can absolutely use a yarn that matches the current item to minimize the visibility. Um, I'm using a contrasting piece here because it will be easy for you to see what I'm doing, but sometimes I actually do prefer to have very visible mending pieces. So this is our weak point right here. So that means I want to make my reinforcement area larger than that. Okay. So I'm going to start it right about here. I'm going to come up through the bottom of a knit stitch, that little heart or V that is formed by the stitch. I want to come up right at the point. And go ahead and leave a decent tail on your yarn so that you can weave it in when you're done. And of course, when we're weaving it in, this will get put into the back of the item. So we've come up through the bottom of this stitch. And effectively what you do in this technique is you're just going to follow what that yarn is already doing, which would mean if I'm following this leg, it needs to go behind the two legs of this stitch. Then if I continue to follow that right back down where I came up, and up at the point of the next stitch over. Now when you are working this through, you want to be very mindful of your tension. You don't want it to be too tight. You don't want it to be too loose. So following where I have come up on the point here, coming behind these two legs. And back down through the point. Back up through the next one, next to it. Ideally, the yarn that you're using to do this technique should match the tension of what is already here. So if you're using DK, for your main project, that should be the same weight of yarn that you're using to darn it. You can also go a bit lighter, but I would not recommend going heavier. Following this line of this stitch, going right behind these two legs, And you can see these stitches starting to form. They're going to be right on top of the others. Let's jump ahead just a bit. All right, I've made it one entire row across using my duplicate stitch. I'm ready to finish the second half of this last duplicate stitch, but as I want to move a row up at this point, I'm going to do it just a little bit differently. I'm still going to come in at the point of that stitch, but now I want to come up onto the next row. So I'll pull a little bit up so you can see. That means I'm sort of grabbing that wood in the back is a little bit of a pearl bar to come up. And now I'm ready to start on my next row up.
as we move up into this thinner weak point, you're going to notice that it's a little bit more difficult to maintain your tension. You're going to have to pay a little bit closer attention because the structure just isn't there to support the yarn as much. We also don't want to pull so roughly that we actually create a hole where there wasn't one before and break yarn unnecessarily. Great, so now we know how to darn a weak spot in our knitting, but what happens if we already have an actual hole happening? First and foremost, knitting will run similar to stockings. I don't have a whole lot of risk of tension making it go any farther out to the sides, but stitches running up and down, as you can see this one has already dropped, will continue until we contain those live stitches. First and foremost, if there are any stitches such as this that have dropped a few rows down, I want to use a small crochet hook to go ahead and bring it back up as much as I can. From here, you can certainly graft these invisibly, such as with Kitchener Stitch, but for my own preference, I always feel that these ends here will always present a weak point and they are very difficult to contain if you're just doing Kitchener Stitch. So I like to weave mine in a little bit. How do you weave an end that's less than an inch long? For this, I like to use a very sharp tapestry or darning needle, and I'm going to go ahead and put an unthreaded needle through a few stitches. I actually like to split the ply a little bit because I feel that that gives that a little bit extra grab. Once I've pushed my needle almost all the way through, then I'm going to thread this end through. Alternatively, for very short ends, you can use a small crochet hook to bring them through some of your stitches. Okay, with those little ends woven in, it's time to take care of my live stitches and start my patch. This is a DK weight swatch, but I'm going to be using a fingering weight to do my patch. So, coming up on the side, I'm just actually going to thread through all of my live stitches to contain them so they don't drop any farther. Once I have contained my live stitches, I'm going to just do a running stitch square around the outside where my patch will be. This running stitch outline not only gives us extra strength, but sort of provides a template for where our patch is going to be. Now for the fun part. Stitching just outside of your running stitch line. Going to come straight up here and just a little bit over. Back down, and just a little bit over. And continue like this the whole way across. As you are stitching, make sure that these don't have too tight of tension and are also not too sloppy and loopy. You want them to have approximately the same tension that you would have with stranding across the back of your work when you do color work. Now that we have gone one direction across the whole patching area, we are going to shift our work 90 degrees and go the other direction.
the main takeaways from this technique. This is my preferred technique when you're actually dealing with a hole in your knitting because I really think it helps reinforce it and keep it from unraveling again, is make sure you're actually going into your knitted fabric each time, particularly once you start weaving the over under at the 90 degree turn. Make sure that you're not just weaving on these threads, that you're actually going up and down through your fabric as shown in that montage video. You can also use your darning needle to kind of push those down as you weave so you get a nice dense patch. Thank you for joining us once again for Wednesdays with Ray. I hope that these two darning and patching techniques will help you extend the life of all of your beloved knitted items.